Greetings, this is Tara Illumination. I'm actually making this video to post it on my own YouTube channel. But I might have to repost it or relink it elsewhere, like on Rumble or Twitter, and eventually TikTok, once they release the blockages on my channel. As you know, I'm primarily an astrologer and tarot reader, but I've kind of diverged quite a lot recently, which is a lot to do with how I got in so much trouble with losing you know, traction with my algorithms and all of that stuff. Anyway, I want to condense everything to the basics here. I have to... It's very hard for me to find privacy right now and do this thing properly, so I am doing kind of a makeshift thing over here at McDonald's. I hope you can hear this okay. There's probably a lot of background noise, I'm sorry. Now the thing, I, I want to preface this whole little video with mention of Pluto. You know, I've been going on about Pluto for a long time now. And it's the primary core energy behind my book, Wealth, Money, Finance, Global Restructuring, January 2020. That particular date was pivotal, and it is still pivotal, and the after effects are still in motion now, and they will be until, let's say, 2025, okay? Why is that such a long extended time period? It's because Pluto moves very slowly, and we're talking about the last degrees of Pluto. The critical degrees at this point would be 27 and a half degrees Pluto in Capricorn, which is the crisis point for the United States, which of course affects the rest of the world. And then the, the, the next pivot point after that is 29 and a half degrees which comes, I believe, at the end of 2024. So you can see how long it is just to go through a couple of degrees of Pluto. Anyway, one of the themes of Pluto is extremes. No compromises. Think of black, white, yes, no, in, out, on, off. If you're not with me, you're against me. That kind of energy, okay? So it's showing up all across the world in the global politics and global finances. If you've watched any of my previous material, you might remember some of that from months ago. Well, it's still in full swing right now. <clears throat> my, I guess some of my most important focuses are the finances itself. Because even though I'm not rich or anything like that, I, I feel wealthy inside, but I don't have a lot of what um, some people would call rich. You've all noticed by now that the U.S. dollar is plummeting in value. Okay, now remember, this is all by design, okay? The people at the very, very tippity top of the pyramid of power, control, and money are fully aware that they're losing control of their money and their power. So they're using a classic weapon that they've used before. And it's all, I guess, strategies they've learned ever since 1913, 1922, 1971, the 1980s, and the various crashes, and the recent one like 2008 and now 2020. Basically, in this world of fake money where they basically print everything out of nowhere, it creates a, a beautiful facade which works and works and works so long as you can keep printing and printing and printing. Uh, I think it was Path Traveler who sent me a beautiful chart the other day from Rand Paul or was it Ron Paul? And it was material directly from the U.S. Federal Reserve Bank. And it showed the value of the U.S. dollar over the last multiple decades. And as you can imagine, what I'm going to say is the chart basically goes like this. Why is that so? It's because of the unrelenting printing of money. In other words, the more money they print, it's more and more dollars chasing the same goods and services and commodities. So the net result, in very simplified terms, is that 
the sticker price for everything goes up and up and up and up and up and up. The more and more dollars are printed. The more and more dollars are printed that get the sticker prices of assets to go up and up and up. The actual value of the dollar itself goes down and down and down and down. I've done charts and videos on this for the last few years. They may look pretty scruffy on my channel, but they are exactly true and relevant now more than ever. So, we have this polarization going on in extremes. We have the number one central bank in the world, United States, continuing to print, 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 inflate, 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 raise interest rates, raise interest rates, and this is all creating a coordinated destruction of the United States dollar and the United States economy. But it's being done incrementally so that we, the people, are not uh, panicked and we're not aware. People like you, I mean, if you're watching this, you're aware. A lot of people are not. All they notice is like, oh my gosh, goodness gracious, gasoline is getting expensive. Oh my god, food's getting expensive. Sometimes you can't even find the right things. Oh, where's all my eggs? Where's where's my milk? Where's my beef? Uh, where's, um, you know, where's the gas? I mean, it's, the fundamentals haven't changed. Yes, we have problems with climate and weather and changes, but that's normal, okay? When you look back for 60 million years, the climate changes like this. Okay? And that's all because of the sun. If you want to blame it on carbon and human beings and cow farts and, you know, methane coming out of plants and garbage and stuff out of Russia, permafrost, fine. That's all a big scam. Anyway, let me go back to the money. Sorry. So at the very pinnacle of power is the Bank of International Settlements, the whole uh, like Rothschild banking phenomenon. And they're basically trying to engineer the next major collapse. And war is a very good way to do that. So uh, war is being fomented and fermented and catalyzed right now, and it's working quite well. And I personally believe it's all, you know, planned out. So, as you get this extreme happening with money, where the U.S. dollar is essentially ruling the world, and it's a weaponized rulership, there are a lot of people outside of America who don't like this. And so they've reached a point of critical mass. For example, uh, Brazil, Russia, China, India, and South Africa, a lot of African nations, uh, South, uh, South American countries, Middle Eastern countries, they're sick of it. Uh, even Europe is sick of it. Uh, Europe goes along with the dollar, more or less, because they have to. But we're getting this extreme polarization going on where the countries that I mentioned that are not part of the United States are all printing money as fast as they can through their, their central banks to try and keep parity with the United States. Because if the United States keeps printing down, 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 devalue, 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 inflate, 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 it makes it easier and easier and easier for us to export our problems, export our debt, export our, let's say, lies and that destroys everything and anyone else that's not American when it comes to finance and those other people they're sick of it so they print as much as they can to try and reach parity but we're always one step ahead so it's what they call a race to the bottom this is the theme that was uh, so concisely shown to me uh, yesterday I think from Path Traveler thank you to Ron Paul and Rand Paul <clears throat> Anyway, so these other nations, they're opting for, let's say, a commodity-based global financial system. They may even uh, reconnect everything to gold, or they might start doing, like, commodity for commodity. It's perfectly possible. Um, they're going to be focusing on gold, oil, gas, timber, 
uh, metals, uranium, lithium, hydrogen, all of that kind of stuff, tangible stuff, hard, hard assets, rather than fantasy, fake, pretend money. And of course, America's, America's concerned because, you know, that means we, we lose our power, we lose our control. So if everything fractures away, what does America normally do when any country decides to fracture itself away from the United States petrodollar dominion? Well, America goes to war. That is the business of America. We just go out there ever since World War II. We've just made it our strategy. Well, we've got all this power now. Let's just, you know, let's really go for it. We might as well. And so they just crush anything in the Middle East, uh, Vietnam, Korea, anything, any kind of proxy. It's usually proxy wars, but any, anybody that dares to try and break away from the United States hegemony of the U.S. dollar, they will suffer death and war. It's still going on today. <clears throat> anyway, there's not much that you and I can do about it. So instead, we have to find ways to live around how are we going to protect our money, protect our privacy, protect ourselves? Okay? I wrote a book about it, but it's still very tricky. Some people are going into cryptocurrencies. Uh, some people going into gold. Some people go into real estate. Some people uh, in, still go into the stocks and buy hard assets and hope that they appreciate. And so on, things like that. Some people are entrepreneurs and they build businesses that are successful that are not contingent upon the value of the currency or the dollar. So another secondary issue that goes with this is the issue of freedom. Because all the other, a lot of other countries are not what we would call free. Americans are starting to wake up and realize that a lot of us are not free. We are debt cows on a debt farm, okay? Wake up, wake up, wake up. One of the things that you can do to release yourself is to get out of debt. Downsize, downsize, understand that happiness is in here, okay? I know you have to have, if you're an American, you pretty much have to have a car or transportation, you have to have a job, you have to have a credit card, you have to have a credit score. But those are all tools to entrap you. <clears throat> I hang out with people who are doing everything we can to uh, liberate ourselves from the tyranny and the imprisonment that is coming. One of the most scary things that's coming is the CBDC, that's the Central Bank Digital Currency, which is well underway. It's already well developed in China, and we are going to be mimicking it over here, along with a massive surveillance state. Cameras everywhere, you know, little chips and everything to get you in and out of a grocery store, to get you in and out of an airplane, uh, to enter a building, uh, to complete any kind of financial transaction. These, let's say, governmental or even non-governmental entities are surveilling you, they're watching you, they're controlling you. And again, it's financial tyranny, it's entrapment, and it's very, very difficult to operate outside of that. And so the struggle that they're having, the folks at the very top, the struggle they're having is how are we going to impose this prison on top of the American people without them being aware that they're living with a choke collar. It's very, very tricky. I know I'm doing everything I can to find a parallel world around it, and I'd like to share some strategies with you. I'm going to end this video in a minute because I've got way too much material to put on here. I was studying some cryptos uh, the other day, some of the big ones like uh, XRP, Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum, and so on. And I kept watch on some of the transactions because in the crypto world, a lot of these transactions are completely open to the public and yet they're totally anonymous. So you can see the movement of money. And it was amazing to witness how 
hundreds of millions, billions of dollars are being shifted around in complete anonymity, complete privacy, from one wallet to another wallet. Anonymous wallet to an anonymous wallet. Now that's true privacy, okay? Sovereign self, sovereign money, your own personal sovereign nation. Of course it takes tremendous responsibility because now you are your own bank. Most people are too scared to take responsibility for their money at that level, but you have to if you want to survive. It's a steep learning curve and I'm still learning a lot. And I'll share with you what I can as I learn, but I need to be a lot more confident. Anyway, I'm going to sign off for now. I hope you find this. I hope it reaches you, and I hope this helps you, bless you. Number one, love thyself. Remember to ask for the healing power of love to come into your body, your mind, your heart, and your soul from up above.